Welcome back everybody. Today's video, this is gonna be a very interesting video and I'm either gonna sink or swim on this thing. But today I'm literally gonna walk you through this E4OD and all the, the uh, clutch application of what's actually going on inside the transmission as it's shifting through all the different gears. And then I'm gonna apply all those gears to actual uh, electrical, how the computer controls it. And then third, we're gonna get into some diagnostics of internal, external problems that you may see on E4ODs. Um, the main reason for this video is I've been helping a fellow YouTuber, uh, Felix, Felix Nungri, I believe is his name. And he lives like 500 miles away and I've been trying to help him diagnose through his transmission issues. And he kind of walked into a, a worst case scenario, I guess. Uh, he bought this truck, it's a 1997 uh, Ford F-250, he's got an E4OD, and he bought the truck, it wasn't working right, the transmission, and he's been trying to diagnose the problems with it, so I figured I'd go ahead and shoot this video to not only help him, but help anybody out there to get a better understanding and an idea of some diagnostics. I mean, there's millions of scenarios, but... I'm gonna get into some of them. I'm gonna show you what he showed me on his scanner, which is very interesting. Uh, but first, we're gonna get into the what's going on actually through all the gears. And then I'm gonna get into the electrical part. And then we'll get into the diagnostics. So stick around, it's gonna be interesting. If I get this right, you'll have a much better understanding. And if I don't, well, shame on me. Okay, to start with, um, what I need you to understand is the fact that the way this transmission is set up, literally from the center support back, the center support goes in the case about right there, from the center support back is literally just a three-speed direct drive transmission. And all they did, and it's very close to a C6, and then all they did was design a bigger case and add overdrive to the three-speed transmission. But first, what we're gonna do is not even worry about the overdrive section. We're just gonna worry about first, second, and third gear in the back half of this. And I have this set up here. This is the way it goes in the trans. And this is the entire rear three-speed part of the gear train. And if you think about this, and this is the way to simplify it, the only thing the clutch packs are in the transmission to do, well, you got the forward clutch, the uh, second gear clutch, intermediate clutch, and then your direct clutch. All those clutches are doing, and you have your low reverse, which I'm gonna talk about them all. But all they're doing is controlling what is going on with this gear train. So, to start with, we'll just start with first gear. You put the transmission down into overdrive range, D range. Whenever you're having a transmission problem, this is a, this is a clutch application chart. And I'm gonna leave the shift solenoids out of it, the electrical part, and we're just gonna deal with the mechanical part of this. But you put it in D range, first gear, the only clutch that comes on is your forward clutch and that clutch the only thing that clutch controls is this forward ring gear the forward clutch comes on applies and it's holding on to this ring gear which in turn is part of this gear train so you got your forward clutch on and there is a sprag on, there's no bands on. The overdrive sprag, which we're not gonna worry about, I'll talk about it in a minute, but your low sprag, and that's back here. Your low roller clutch. This is basically that race right here, and that is bolted to the case. And I have it kind of bolted to the case here, if you will. So, when you take off in first gear, that's all that's on. The low roller clutch is holding, and your forward clutch is driving this front ring gear. That's all that's happening. And first gear ratio 
is 272 to one, meaning your input, your engine basically, turns 2.72 turns for every one turn of the output shaft or your drive shaft. So if we were to do that, spin this, watch, we got white lines here. I'm gonna spin this one turn and look, look where your white line is coming out. Now that's one full turn of your engine and you're about a third of the way here. Now this is first gear. That's two full engine revolutions and we're about two thirds over here of one revolution and 2.72. This is coming up around. Now that just went one full turn and this is basically two and three quarters. That's your first gear. That's why it's easier for a, when, when a transmission takes off in first, that's why your engine revs up and you're moving slow and then it hits second gear. So that's first gear. <clears throat> now, what's important here to note is what's happening with this sun shell. Because like I said, the forward clutch is the only thing it controls is that front uh, ring gear. <clears throat> For second gear, you have your direct drum. And all this direct drum does is control the action of this sun gear. Now, if you noticed in first gear, look at the direction this thing is turning that way. If that makes sense, just turning that way. When this thing hits second gear, if you look at the clutch and band application chart, the forward and intermediate clutch, basically the forward stays on and your second gear clutch comes on and the sprags that are on is, we're not gonna worry about the overdrive right now, we're just getting coming into the three speed part of this, your intermediate sprag holds. So, <clears throat> you're driving your forward clutch and when second gear applies, your second gear clutches are spline to your sprag. <clears throat> and this is spinning this way in first. When these clutches come on, it locks the direct drum and stops this from turning if that makes sense through your sprag which is locked this is locked to the case and your direct drum stops turning which in turn gives you second gear so if we start this over again you got your white line here and we're almost straight up here so we're driving the forward clutch is still on. The second gear clutch is applied, which stopped this from turning this way. So we're gonna hold this. Right now, it's just controlling the gear, the gears here. And we're gonna drive the forward and hold this. And our gear ratio in second is 154 to one. So input engine RPM is gonna turn 1.54, basically one and a half turns for every one revolution of this output shaft. So if we do that, we're holding it. This is second. That's one. And basically our white line is down at the bottom. It's turned about a half a turn, a little more than a half. One point one and a half turns now on your forward and your output shaft turn once. So in, in first gear, this turned 2.74. When it hit second, all it did was control that, keep that from turning, still driving your forward. It changed your gear ratio, input to output, 1.54 in second. Now that's second gear. <coughs> You go up to whatever 30 mile an hour and it does a two, three shift, third gear. Basically third gear is you got your forward 
the second gear clutch stays on. And I'm gonna explain that here in one second. To get third gear, you need your forward and direct clutch to come on. So what happens is you're still controlling this, uh, sun, this sun shell. There's clutches inside your direct clutch, okay? And that is spline right to your forward drum, right in there. So your forwards are still on through first and second. Your forwards stay on, they're still driving. And then your direct clutch inside here splines to your forward, which in turn, all it does, instead of keeping this uh, locked, it drives them both at the same speed, which in turn gives you, that's third gear, direct drive, the input spinning one and the output is spinning one. Direct gear, that's the, the whole point of that term, direct. Input and output are spinning the same. There's no gear ratio going on, it's one to one. So that's your three speed part of your E4OD in the rear half of the transmission. Now, what's important to note here, and Felix, I'm gonna get into it here shortly, but when this direct drum, if you think about it, it was spinning this way and your second gear clutches were on, it locked. Now, when this thing hits third, this, the direct clutch is inside here, spline to this, and no longer is it holding it or trying to spin that way, it's spinning this way. So you're getting your one-to-one -one ratio, but your second clutch is still on. And, and uh, like I said, Felix, I'm gonna explain this in a minute uh, as far as what your bind up is going on. But the biggest thing to understand here is that your second clutch did not come off. It's just your direct clutch came on and started driving this. And now your Sprag is freewheeling. Even though your second gear clutches are on, it's not holding because of that Sprag is freewheeling. Now that's what's important to note when we get into manually shifting. So that's basically third gear. Okay, now moving on to the uh, overdrive overdrive shift basically. We're in third gear, we're direct drive one to one in the back half. When this thing hits fourth gear overdrive, if you look at this clutch and band application chart, fourth gear is the forward, intermediate, and direct clutch. They're all the three speed part of this in the back. And then the only other thing that comes on is the overdrive clutch. Now in first, second, and third, you got your input from your engine going through the overdrive section and basically it's taken off on that, uh, the overdrive roller clutch, it's locked. And this is your input to your forward drum. So first, second, and third, it's just one-to-one -one in the overdrive section, turning your forward drum. That's what's driving everything in the back one to one when this thing goes to hit fourth your overdrive clutch comes on and basically stops this from turning and then you get your engine coming in engine rpm and the output of the overdrive is basically uh, i think it's like 0.7 to one so your input is going to turn less than your output so instead of gear reduction, you're overdriving that section. That's the whole point of overdrive. So when this thing hits fourth, right now it's third gear. It's locked one-to-one. -one. That sprag inside is holding. All you have to do is apply this clutch, which is uh, uh, basically splined to the case, which stops this from turning. That stops fourth gear and now you're overdriving the input. So basically, we need to uh, do our marks here. So 
the engine is driving and you'll see that this is spinning faster than this. So you're over driving the direct drive part of it. So we're gonna go one turn here of the engine and see we've already went past one turn here but we haven't got up to one turn here. So that's one turn on your engine and you're basically overdriving the direct drive part, the one to one by one and a little over a quarter overdrive. So that's basically fourth gear. Okay. Now that we went through, if you're still with me, we went through the first, second, third, and fourth gears. Now, this is, this is pretty cool uh, how they get reversed. And if you look at this close, to get reversed, you basically need your direct clutch, which is inside your direct drum, which all it's controlling is the driving of this sun shell. Now, if all we did was drive this sun shell, you notice the output shaft isn't spinning and your low drum is, is spinning clockwise. It's overrunning that roller clutch in the back. So to get reverse, you're, you have to have your direct clutch, which also comes on on your two, three shift. It's, it's on in third. Your direct clutch comes on and drives this sun shell. Now, if you notice, look at the, that's why the forward clutch has to be off because the forward clutch has to spin. So basically you're driving your sun shell with a direct clutch, third gear, third in reverse. Your forward clutch is not on, that way it's able to turn backwards. Now also to get reverse, your low reverse clutch has to come on. This is your low reverse clutch, and that is splined to this low drum. Now in first gear, that was being held because it was trying to spin backwards in first by the roller clutch. This is why you have to have the low reverse clutch on in reverse, because if you drive this, all it's gonna do is spin that clockwise, overrun the roller clutch, but if you have your low reverse clutch come on, it holds this from turning because these are splined to the case. So you're holding this with your low reverse clutch and driving the sun shell and look at the output shaft. You can see that it's spinning backwards. But if you didn't have that clutch on, all it would do is freewheel. So to get reverse, pretty simple, direct clutch comes on and your low reverse clutch comes on and it changes the direction in your planetaries. Next, we're gonna talk about the manual first and second, because this is where it gets important, Felix, in the problems that you were having and the bind ups that are going on. So next, we're gonna do first and second. Okay, now that we have all the forward gears and reverse taken care of, now we're gonna get into manual shifting. And when you put the shifter all the way down into manual low, there's two, uh, well, there's one reason for having manual gears and the main reason is for engine braking. And best way to explain engine braking is when you're in automatic, say overdrive position and you, you speed up in first and you let off the gas, it kind of feels like you're coasting. To get engine braking, basically you pull it down into manual low and basically you take off and when you let off the gas, it feels like the car kind of pull, is pulling back. And what happens is in automatic first, if you come look at this, you take off in first, your low sprag is holding, you're, you're hitting the gas. When you let off the gas, the output shaft or the wheels, this connected to the wheels, is actually driving when you let off the gas because the engine is trying to idle down and this is still trying to drive. And what you get is in first gear, overdrive position, the overrun clutch. That's why it feels like it's coasting. But in manual low, 
those low reverse clutches come on. Remember, this was on in reverse also, but the whole point of it coming on in manual low is you get this held when you in manual first and you let off the gas, if this is being held, you'll get that engine braking. That's what you feel when the, uh, when the car tries to slow itself down. Instead of coasting, this is being held and you get the engine braking effect of this being held, if that makes sense. Now, in second gear, you basically have your direct drum in second gear, if you remember, you're basically holding this and your clutch is on when you basically in automatic second, you rev up you're, and you let off the gas. What happens is this, your output shaft is driving faster than the engine and your overrun, your intermediate sprag is overrunning because this is driving faster than the input so to get engine braking in second they have a band and this is important felix you have a band that comes on that locks is locked to the case and that way when this is driving faster than the uh, engine you have this band come on you don't have the intermediate sprag of uh, overrunning you have this band also holding you in second so that's how you get engine braking instead of the roller the uh, intermediate sprag overrunning this is holding this from turning so that's engine braking in second okay now that we went through the engine braking part of the three speed there is one more engine braking part in the overdrive section and it has to do with this coast clutch here you come in close here look at this what this coast clutch does your steel is locked to the overrun drum which is your overdrive on the outside and your clutches are splined to the driver basically this is your forward drum here that's what's driving the forward drum and all the three speed part but, and there's also the, the roller, the overdrive roller clutch down in there. So you have your input shaft coming from your torque converter, going through the whole overdrive section. And in third gear, it's spinning one to one. Fourth gear, the sprag is overrun. You can hear it in there and this is being held in fourth and you're overdriving. When you let off in uh, first, second, or third, in manual gears, the purpose of this coast clutch is to lock these two together. You can't get any kind of overdrive. Uh, overdrive, it's one-to-one. -one. With these locked together, when your output, or your output shaft or drive shaft is driving harder, then your engine, if this isn't locked, you'll get, you'll get a, a, a coast situation. Now with that locked together, you get engine braking because these two are locked and you basically your engine is being forced to slow you down as opposed to the sprag overrunning. So that's the uh, overdrive section and the input overdrive roller clutch basically. Okay, Felix, this is mainly for you, but anybody out there that may be having this particular problem, the main problem that he was having was he puts it in down in overdrive, and even though the computer says he's taken off in first gear, as far as the shift solenoids go, in the overdrive position, he said it, it felt like it was taken off in a higher gear. And from what he's explaining to me, it's like trying to take off in fourth gear it's trying to be in third and overdriving and the engine, it's lugging really bad. If it was taken off in third gear, it would take off easier. 
If it was taken off in second gear, even easier. And then first gear obviously is the easiest. But you can kind of feel how hard the engine is lugging to get a feel of what gear you're taking off in. But for theory's sake, it, it appears that your transmission is taking off in fourth in the overdrive uh, position. Now, when you pull it, when he pulls it down into ma any manual gear, manual first or second, it's binding up and it will not move. Now, theoretically, in overdrive position, it can be in fourth and there won't be any binding up. It'll just be very sluggish to take off and get up to whatever mile an hour. But in manual gears, if it's taking off in fourth, what my theory is, Felix, is say you put it down into manual first. In fourth gear, if you look at this, with this direct drive, you got third gear and fourth gear is overdriving. In, in direct, in uh, the overdrive position, the overrun sprag is holding, but in manual gears, say it's taken off in fourth, in manual first, hydraulically, it's applying this low reverse clutch and this in fourth gear, it has to be spinning, but with that low reverse clutch on, it's binding the transmission. And same scenario in manual second. If you remember in regular overdrive position, your second gear clutch is still on. It's just overrunning the sprag but in manual second, your band is coming on also, which is locked to your case. So, which is also causing your binding in manual second. So you have your bind up in manual first because that clutch is on. In manual second, your band is coming on. Hydraulically, it's being controlled. And that is also causing the bind up because in fourth gear, this whole thing needs to be spinning and it can't in manual first or second, if that makes sense. Right. Okay, moving on, now that we have basically what goes on uh, mechanically inside the transmission, this is how the computer controls this transmission. And this really isn't that complicated. You got your solenoid pack. You only have five solenoids in here. Your EPC solenoid, electronic pressure controlled, all that does is control the line pressure rising and falling. So let's just eliminate that for now. And then there's only four other solenoids. You have two shift solenoids, a coast clutch solenoid. So this coast clutch has its own solenoid and then the torque converter clutch, which let's eliminate that for now. All we're worried about really at the moment are those three. And then we're gonna narrow it down. We have shift solenoid A and shift solenoid B. And those two only, that's all it is, is those two solenoids controlling four different gears. And how it works is, if you look at this clutch application and solenoid chart, in first gear, you're in overdrive range. First gear, your solenoid A is on and your shift solenoid B is off. When it hits second, all the computer does is turn on solenoid B, A is already on, so to hit second gear, all the, the computer does is ground the uh, control, the solenoid itself, turns that on, and it moves the one, two ship valve, and you get second gear. For third gear, your shift solenoid B stays on, and your shift solenoid A, all the computer does is cut the ground to shift solenoid A, and that gives you third. That moves your two, three shift valve in your valve body. And then in fourth, both shift solenoids turn off. So first gear, A is on. Second gear, both A and B are on. Third gear, B is the only one on. A gets shut off. And then in fourth, it just shuts off both. And that's how the computer controls four different gears just by controlling those two solenoids, whether they're on or off. Okay, 
going into the diagnostic part of the issues that he's having, whenever I have a transmission problem, the first and foremost thing that I do is figure out whether it's an internal transmission problem or external. Because otherwise, you're just either throwing parts at it or pulling your hair out trying to figure out what's going on. But we had a uh, tool back at Amco where literally it would plug into the whatever solenoid pack it was for particular transmission and it was a little box and you could either be in monitor mode and monitor what is going on with the transmission and the computer controlling it and all the lights would light up for shift solenoids or whatever or you could flip a switch and you could actually manually control the transmission externally from the computer that way you can figure out whether it's internal or external. But that, that tool was the, was the shit back then. But it's come to the point with Felix's transmission that we're gonna have to go a little medieval with this thing. And what's going on here is, if you think about it, coming in to your number one wire, vehicle power in for, for the, all the shift solenoids. So you have power coming in to your number one, and that's connecting all your shift solenoids. So you turn the key on, you got power to all the solenoids. And the computer just controls the ground to each one of these solenoids. Now, what I suggested to Felix to do is, that's why I keep always suggesting to make sure that you have power coming in here no matter what you're doing. But if you have power coming in, you literally can take and cut the wire the two shift solenoid wires coming out of the coming out of the harness right at the trans and hook a ground wire hook your ground wire to this shift solenoid number one and your ground wire to shift solenoid number two and you literally can control that transmission with just those two wires manually eliminate the computer and by using a toggle switch <clears throat> you can you can control all four gears with just those two toggle switches like we just talked about with uh, how the shift solenoids work for all four gears now that's what i suggest and that's where we're at at this point i uh, haven't he, i haven't heard back from him what happened with that but he did tell me that he grounded both of those wires which should turn both solenoids on which in turn should give you second gear and it's still taking off in let's say fourth gear, it definitely wasn't second. So that alone, powering those two solenoids manually should absolutely give you second gear no matter what, no matter what the computer is doing or trying to do, and it's not. So that basically is telling me it's internal, whether it be stuck shift solenoids or something in the valve body hanging up or mechanically, the transmission is basically just stuck in fourth gear. So that's where we're at there. But you literally can control all four gears by just grounding those two wires coming out of the solenoid pack. Okay, getting into uh, the diagnostic part also, when he, when he first bought this truck, he bought the truck, It uh, the transmission never did work right. Apparently it's got like a I guess a junkyard transmission in it. Uh, so he never knew what was going on before when it was working properly as opposed to not working properly. He bought worst case scenario basically. But he has a four scan scanner that he hooked to his laptop and these are some of the readings and the first thing that I do when I go to diagnose, I, you gotta have a scanner. If you don't have a scanner, you're basically pissing in the wind and changing parts and pulling your hair out. But he's with this scanner, he was put this thing down in manual first, transmission range, manual first. So that appears to be working properly. The, trans, the computer is sensing that he's put it in manual first. And if you look here, your shift solenoid A and shift solenoid B Shift solenoid A is on, manual first. So that all appears to be that the computer is controlling it. But as soon as he put it in a manual second, we have transmission range, manual second. 
This is a red flag that I saw that tells me there could be a computer problem going on. You're in manual second. What's supposed to happen is if you look at this application chart, shift solenoid A and B should both be on for second gear, manual or automatic second. But if you look at this, shift solenoid one is off, shift solenoid two is off. So if the computers actually has those two off, the gear you will get is fourth gear. But if that's what's happening, this thing's in fourth gear, even though the computer is sensing you got it in manual second, that manual second band is coming on hydraulically, it's being controlled. So even though you're in fourth gear, it's trying to be in manual second with the band on, and that's what's causing the bind up. So that in itself is a red flag, and that's why we went the route of basically grounding those two shift solenoids to make sure that uh, we can eliminate this problem right here. Okay, moving on with this diagnostic. I lost my camera, man, but we're going to keep moving forward here. Um, one thing, I had him scan it, and he sent me some pictures of what he saw, and we already looked at the manual second transmission range was in manual second and both shift solenoids were off and that was the first red flag that i saw because if we go to our uh, solenoid application chart solenoids on for second gear should be a and b on not off but the fact that the computer seems to be commanding both shift solenoids off is fourth gear if you look at this here both shift solenoids off are fourth gear not second that was the first red flag another thing i had him do was take two different parameters of we got transmission range overdrive and transmission range drive so in the overdrive position you put your gear selector in drive with the TCIL, transmission control into indicator lamp off, meaning that's the computer will shift through all the gears all the way through overdrive. That light on the stalk is not on. You should have, this is the CCS, coast clutch solenoid. That's that solenoid right here that controls, only controls that one clutch. The computer can control that clutch through that solenoid in overdrive range, that coast clutch solenoid should be off. When he put it in the overdrive range in the drive, he hit the button. So the stalk button, the transmission control indicator lamp comes on and it won't get overdrive. It'll take off one, two, three, but it'll never shift into overdrive because you have the button pushed. That coast clutch solenoid should be on in this scenario with the button pushed and the light on. But this scenario in the overdrive position, for some reason, that coast clutch solenoid is being commanded on. That's another red flag that I saw that it's not changing when you hit the stalk button. And theoretically, if you think about this, in the say it's in the overdrive position and that coast clutch solenoid is on when that thing goes to hit fourth gear and that clutch is on these two cannot slip meaning the overdrive clutch comes on here and if that clutch is on on the inside these two can't slip and give you your overdrive uh input sl uh slower than the output and it'll bind up because this can't slip. So those were the two red flags that I saw so far. Haven't seen any other red flags, but it's just a matter of taking it one step at a time and working through the whole diagnostic. That's why I had him go medieval because a lot of this wasn't making sense on his scanner, whether it's the scanner not uh, giving proper information 
or whether that's actually what's happening. We went ahead and went medieval with the uh, electrical part and did this and just grounding those two solenoids, you should be able to control the trans no matter what the computer itself is trying to do. All right, we're gonna go ahead and end this video at this point. I lost my cameraman and you can see at the end there, I had to do it myself and it's a, little, a lot more difficult to explain stuff and hold the camera and do all that. So we're gonna end it here. I hope you guys got something out of this and you're not more confused than when you started the video kind of thing. Uh, Felix, let me know. We'll work this, we'll work through the problem. Uh, bottom line is, most important thing that I've ever found is internal, external problem. You gotta separate the two, whether it's computer or electrical externally to the trans, or whether you got an internal trans, which you can still have electrical problems inside the trans with your solenoid pack, but that is internal. And going medieval and grounding those two shift solenoids, you totally should be able to control the inside of an E4OD just by those two wires. And if, if you wanna go farther, the coast clutch solenoid three wires. Otherwise, it's, uh, it's that imperative to figure out internal, external. At this point, it seems like he has internal and external problems, but until the transmission is able to work right, you got to deal with the internal stuff. So we're going to end it here. If you want me to do another video, I might do a part two to this. If this video actually is, uh, has been worth making, it's all about what you guys want to see and uh, whether this video was worth making or not, let me know. We'll talk about this. I can go way more in depth with this. We just went through a couple scenarios of the million that can actually be going on inside your E4OD, but you, know, you have to narrow it down one step at a time. That's what it takes. And thank you guys for watching. We'll talk to you soon. Rick, we are in the middle of your rebuild. I, I chose to use your trans as a guinea pig here and show this video today. We may do a part two, but we're halfway through the rebuild. Everything's looking good. As you can see, all these parts, everything's coming together. And uh, I, we are doing the build video, but I figured I'd shoot this one first. And we're just going to go from there and keep on getting it. So thanks for watching. Take care. Like and subscribe. If you like what you see, if you don't like what you see, just uh, do a thumbs down and, and tell me about it. Because I want to hear anything. Anything you got to say, good or bad, let me know. We'll talk to you later. And... Uh, See you soon.